What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Still here in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 46. And here in Isaiah 46, uh, we're still speaking a little bit about the idols and God. And uh, there's also a, another mention of Cyrus here in Isaiah 46. Not by name, though. But Isaiah 46, we kind of transition transition into Babylon. Isaiah 47 is about Babylon. And more specifically, we know that uh, many prophecies have dual fulfillments, uh, a past and a future fulfillment. And Isaiah 46, I mean, Isaiah 47 is, uh, I believe, more of a future fulfillment and time Babylon, which is the United States. But let's get into 46. And before I get started, let me preach the gospel. Everybody's going to stand before God for judgment one day. And anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God. God is perfect. God is holy. God is righteous. And he's not going to allow any unrighteousness in his kingdom. Repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of heart or change of mind. Um, most of the time we see repent in the Bible, it means turn from your sins, turn from your wickedness, and turn to God. Because none of us are perfect. And... And we can't earn our way to heaven. That's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago. God, God the Son, born as a human, faced temptations like us, but he lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect and didn't deserve any punishment, he didn't deserve to die. That death that he died on the cross, well, that death that we deserve in a lake of fire, for our sins, he died for us on a cross so that our death in a lake of fire is taken away and we receive eternal life. Our sins are taken away and we receive his righteousness, his perfection. It's only through Jesus and the sacrifice that he made that we can be saved. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later and you call out to him to forgive you, to save you, to change you, and you truly mean it. He will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit, which changes your heart and leads you to follow him. The Holy Spirit also gives you, it's the Spirit of God. It leaves, gives you uh, wisdom, discernment, and understanding in many things. He will forgive you if you truly turn to him and ask him for forgiveness. Ask him to save you. He will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love Him. We know it's going to be with the Father, with the Son, with the angels, with all the rest of the people of God in paradise, in new glorified bodies. Not these bodies that die, but new immortal bodies that don't die. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. There's not much time left. Now let's get into Isaiah 46. It's a little bit shorter of a chapter. Bell has bowed down. Nebo stoops over. And so Bell, that's a shortened version for Baal. And Nebo is also one of the Babylonian gods. And as I spoke about in my last Psalm video, if you haven't seen Psalm 88, uh, Daily Psalm 88, check it out. I spoke about how these, all these gods, at least almost all of them in the past and even now today all go back to the to one character Nimrod who was the leader of the basically first world order he was a leader at the tower of Babel when they tried to literally build a tower to heaven 
and uh, and also this earth isn't a globe or that wouldn't be possible they were literally trying to build a tower to heaven and to overthrow God and And after he died and after the see at the Tower of Babel the languages were confounded. God changed all the people's languages and then scattered them. And so the people went out into all the different uh at the at the time they all had one language. All all the all the earth had one language and it was one world order. They were all building this tower, trying to overthrow God and be gods themselves and um they God got scattered the people con confounded their languages they this is where all the different languages come from at least most of them and uh so the people went out forming the different cultures forming the different civilizations in the world worshiping the same guy as gods of different names. And so this is where we get all these ancient gods from Baal to Molech to Apollo, Apollyon to Osiris and Ra. They're all come from Nimrod. They're all about it's all, all Nimrod. It's all the same character. And this is who is also the beast of Revelation who comes back as the Antichrist and also the false prophet. And uh, I, talk, I talked about that in my last video, um, Psalm 88, check that out if you haven't seen it. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, I mean on Facebook, it's either in the groups or you can go to my YouTube channel at bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash Larry Newport. Just go to the videos or you can go to the playlist. Bell has bowed down. Nebo stoops over. Their images are consigned to the beasts and to the cattle. The things that you carry are burdensome. A load for the weary beast. They stooped over. They have bowed down together. Not, not the beast, but... Um, well, actually, maybe it is speaking about the beast. The, the animals. They have, they have stooped down. They have bowed down together. They could not rescue the burden. But they but they themselves have gone into captivity. Actually, their images. Uh, it's speaking about the images. So it says, Bell has bowed down. Nebo stoops over. Their images, their, their statues, because many people used to worship, uh, and people still do, uh, worship and bow down to little statues, metal and wooden statues. Bell has bowed down. Nebo stoops over. Their images, their statues, are consigned, the idols that are consigned to the beasts and the cattle. The things that you carry are burdensome. A w the, 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 the beasts that the animals carry are burdensome. A, a load for the weary beast. They stooped, they stooped over. They bowed down together. And that's what was just said about... Uh, Bell and Nebo. Bell is bowed down. Nebo stoops over. They stooped over. They have bowed down together. They could not rescue the burden. They couldn't rescue their own images, their own statues. <laughs> but they, but have but have themselves gone into captivity. Listen to me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which is the same thing. The house of Jacob and the house of Israel is the same thing. You who have been born by me from birth and have been carried from the womb and other... I'm going to just go to another translation. Let's see. The NIV says, You whom I have upheld since your birth and carried since you were born. NLT says, I have cared for you since you were born. Yes, I carried you before you were born.
Even to your old age, I will be the same. Hallelujah. God is who supports us. God is who gives us life. God is who gives us opportunities. God is who gives us positions. And God is who gives us every meal, every breath. We need to honor, respect, and reverence him. Even to your old age, I will be the same. God is good. Hallelujah. And even to your graying years, I will bear you. I have done it. And I will carry you. And I will bear you. And I will deliver you. Hallelujah. To whom would you liken to me? To God. There's no one like God. And make me equal and compare me. That we would be alike. No one. Those who lavish gold from the purse and waste silver on the scale, hire a goldsmith and he makes it into a god. They bow down, indeed, they worship it. And God has been saying in the last few chapters, all this is in vain. Why are you worshiping statues? Why are you worshiping idols? I am the living God. I'm the one who created all things. I'm the one who gives you every breath, every opportunity. Those who lavish gold from the purse. And even if it's something as small as someone just having... Because I've seen, I've seen people have uh, like little Buddha statues and, and think it's good luck to have the Buddha statue or to kiss the Buddha or something. I mean, even something as small as that. Forget that statue. Seek God. He's the one who gives the blessings. Those who lavish gold from the purse and weigh it... And waste silver on the scale, hire a goldsmith, and he makes it into a god. They bow down, indeed, they worship it. They lift it upon the shoulder and carry it. They set it in its place and it stands there. It does not move from its place. Though one may cry out to it, it cannot answer. It cannot deliver him from his distress. Remember this. And be assured, recall it to mind, you transgressors. Remember the former things, and transgressors of what? Transgressors of his law. He is the one who makes the law, who sets the standards, and we have to follow him. Breaking his law is sin. That's what defines sin, is breaking the law of God. Remember this and be assured. Recall it to mind, you transgressors. Remember the former things long past. For I am God, and there is no other. Hallelujah. I am God, and there is no one like me. Hallelujah. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things which have not yet been done. And so let me just stop there for a second. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things which have not yet been done. The Bible is the only book that has true prophecy that foretells what is to come. Over and over and over again, it's consistent. And if you think it's not, it, it's just a misunderstanding of the prophecies. It's only by the Spirit of God that you can truly understand the prophecies. That you can truly understand... What God is meaning and describing through His Word is His Word is so amazing, so detailed. You just got to be able to understand the uh, symbolism and everything else. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times things which have not yet been done. And let me show you one example of how He declares the end from the beginning. And so first, let's go to the to the end. Let's go here to Revelation 17, verse 15. And he said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. And this is a major key to understanding a lot of the scripture. That water represents people, but something that I didn't realize until recently... Not, I'm, and I'm not saying I'm anything, but I, I didn't realize this until recently. Water also represents the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. 
And, uh, but uh, it depends on the context. But we read right here, he said to me, the water which the, which, where you saw where the harlot sits are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So if we go from Revelation, go from the end back to the beginning, back to Genesis chapter 1. God gave us a prophecy in Genesis chapter 1 declaring the end from the beginning. I'm going to just read it from the beginning. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning one day. Now here on the second day is where we get the prophecy. Then God said, Let there be an expanse, or firmament, in the midst of the waters. And let it separate the waters from the waters. Let me just continue and we'll talk about it. God made the expanse and separated the waters which were below the expanse or firmament from the waters which were above the expanse. And it was so. Waters represent people. So God gave us a prophecy here in Genesis chapter 1 of the rapture and the resurrection. How he's going to separate the people below from the people above. Above is literally heaven above us. There's the firmament, which is a physical structure. Above that is heaven. And he said he's going to separate the waters which are above the firmament from the waters which are be below the firmament. This is the, a prophecy of the rapture and the resurrection back here in Genesis, the beginning of Genesis, telling the end from the beginning. God said, let, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it separate the... Now, I'm just reading read it people because that's what it represents. God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the people. And let it separate the people from the people. God made the firmament and separated the waters which were... The, the people which were below the firmament from the people which were above the firmament. And it was so. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our God is amazing. The Bible is amazing. And people who don't agree just don't get it. They don't realize that you're, if you don't have the Spirit of God, you're truly blind to a lot of this stuff. It's only God's Spirit, which you only receive the Holy Spirit through faith, through a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you turn, truly turn to Him and believe in Him for the salvation of your soul, if you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and you turn to Him, and ask Him to forgive you and to save you. He will give you the Holy Spirit. And you will be able to understand a lot of this stuff. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times things which have not yet been done. Saying, my purpose will be established. And I will accomplish all my good pleasure. Hallelujah. Calling a bird of prey from the east. The man of my purpose from a far country. And this is speaking about Cyrus still calling a bird of prey from the east and a man of my purpose from a far country and if we go back here to uh, Isaiah 41 verse 2 it says who has aroused one from the east who he calls in righteousness to his feet he delivers up the nations before him and subdues kings he makes them like dust with his sword and wind driven chaff, chaff with his bow and this one from the east who he calls was also mentioned as Cyrus who he subdues kings before him God subdues kings before him and delivers up nations before him we read that in uh, it was either Isaiah 45 or 44 and this mentioned one from the east and again here in Isaiah 46 it says calling a bird of prey from the east the man of my purpose from a far country Truly I have spoken, and I will bring it to pass. I have planned it, surely I will do it. Hallelujah. Listen to me, stubborn-minded, who are far from righteousness. 
Listen to me, stubborn-minded, who are far from righteousness. I bring near my righteousness. It is not far off. It is not far off. His, his, his ways aren't far off and hard to, hard to reach, hard to do. His, uh, his yoke is easy. And we read this in, the, in Deuteronomy as well as Jesus said his yoke is easy. And, and Deut- I believe it's in Deuteronomy. It says, uh, this thing I command you today is not too hard for you. It's not, it's not far off. It's not too hard for me, too hard from you. Listen to me, stubborn minded who are far off from righteousness. I bring near my righteousness. It is not far off. And also, um, it, it, his salvation is near. And as, as we read in the next verse, I bring near my righteousness. It is not far off. And my salvation will not delay. Hallelujah. There's not much time left. And I will grant, grant salvation in Zion. Not only in the earthly Zion delivering the Jews. But in the heavenly Zion, that's where salvation is going to be. That's where we're going to be saved and brought to. And I will grant salvation in Zion and my glory for Israel. Hallelujah. That's the end of Isaiah 46. The next chapter, 47, is about Babylon. More and more the end time Babylon. Um, which is the United States, but also Israel. Although a lot of the scriptures about Babylon are, seem to be sport, more specifically about the U.S. And, uh, hallelujah. Like I said, if you haven't seen Psalm 88, check that out. Um, brothers, brothers and sisters, let's stay strong in faith. Let's endure to the end. Let's walk in all the ways of God. Let's serve him with all our heart. There's not much time left. We need to be ready. We need to be right with God. We need to do His will in all things. Let's uh, let's be ready. Let's let's preach the gospel. Let's shine His light in everything we do by living His word out and speaking His word. Let's show His love in everything we do. And we do that by being patient, by being kind. And I still have to memorize it. Uh, we need to be patient. We need to be kind. We need to be forgiving. We need to not hold things against people if if they do us wrong we need to um not get angry easily we need to be merciful and and show the love of god in all things we do let's be ready let's be right with him let's serve him with all our heart and if you don't have a relationship with jesus christ just he wants to save you and jesus died on the cross for our sins that's why he came two thousand years ago it's a i mean it's a it's a part of recorded history that he was here that he was crucified just like the bible says he was jesus came two thousand years ago was was born as a human although he was more than just human lived a perfect life and died for our sins so that through him we receive forgiveness of sins and receive eternal life we're made right with god to his sacrifice that he made for us he died that death for us our sins require death. He died that death for us. Repent and believe the gospel. Just call out to him to forgive your sins. Truly turn to him. you got to give your life to him. Submit your life to him. Truly turn to God. And call on, call on God. Call on Jesus to forgive your sins. To save you. And if you truly mean it, if you truly turn to him, he will save you. He'll forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit. And he'll give you eternal life. We're talking about eternity. This life is short. Any any one of us could be gone today. This life is short. Don't bet your eternity. Don't play around with your eternity. Just messing around. Uh, being foolish in this life. This life is short. Eternity is what matters. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.